Suppose you become really interested in organic synthesis, that part of organic chemistry where chemists go into the lab and synthesize or put together cool molecules with interesting properties. You may ask, how do organic chemists figure out what reaction to use in synthesizing these complicated molecules? One great example of a total synthesis is the synthesis of reserpine by Robert Burns Woodward, a famous organic chemist from Harvard. Woodward's synthesis of reserpine was published in 1956, and although that was a long time ago, the Woodward synthesis of reserpine is so clever and illustrates so many aspects of organic chemistry that it is described in almost every book published on organic synthesis. Reserpine is a member of a well-known class of indole alkaloids known as yohimbine alkaloids. It has five rings labeled A to E. The indole portion of the molecule is aromatic and flat. Ring E contains five of the six chiral centers in the molecule. The DE ring junction is a cis-fused decalin type system whose conformational properties will play an important role at the end of the synthesis. The sixth chiral center occurs at C3 of the molecule where the hydrogen, as drawn, is pointed up opposite the DE ring junction hydrogens. As Woodward contemplated how he was going to synthesize his target molecule with its six chiral centers, there were were several things that he knew about indole alkaloids that are worth mentioning. The first is that he could probably rely on some version of the Pictet Spangler reaction and the Bischler Naplerowski reaction to connect the top tryptamine portion of the molecule to the bottom ring E portion of the molecule together. These two reactions have really neat mechanisms and we'll go more in depth in later videos. Knowing these two reactions allowed Woodward to make the following disconnections and to write out the sub-target molecule 2 that contains the five chiral centers around ring E. Another important fact that Woodward knew as a result of previously published studies on yohimbine alkaloids was that the chirality at C3 of the molecule was epimerizable under acidic conditions. That is, in compounds where the C3H was up, say in this chiral indole molecule, treatment with acid results in a racemic mixture of up and down. This is important because it means that Woodward could concentrate on setting up the five chiral centers in ring E, and the chirality at C3 could presumably be established later in the synthesis under acidic conditions. Woodward envisioned that subtarget 2 would be available from compound 3, itself available from a Diels-Alder reaction after removing the circled carbon. So, the synthesis starts with a Diels-Alder reaction between paraquinone and vinyl acrylic acid methyl ester. The Diels-Alder, as described in a previous video, proceeded by an endotransition state to establish three of the five chiral centers found in ring E. Also, the double bond in ring E could be used to introduce the remaining oxygen-containing functional groups in a trans fashion. On paper, this could be done by epoxidizing the double bond and opening the epoxide with an oxygen nucleophile. Of course, we have to ask what face of the double bond would be epoxidized and which carbon of the epoxide would most likely be attacked by the oxygen nucleophile. In 3D, compound 3 has the shape of the roof of a house, with the two cis hydrogens at the ring junction pointing up, as shown. The molecule then has a convex or outside face to it, and a concave or inside face. We can assume that most epoxidizing agents would approach the double bond from the less hindered, convex face giving molecule 3A. Knowing that epoxides open to give the trans relationship, epoxide 3A would have to be attacked from the concave face at C18 to give the correct relative stereochemistry for reserpine. A thorough conformational analysis of this situation suggests that the oxygen nucleophile would actually open the epoxide by attacking at C17 to give the wrong relative stereochemistry. To set up the correct stereochemistry, Woodward did the following. He reduced the two carbonyls of the quinone using mirwine pondor virli conditions, aluminum tetraisopropoxide, which reduced both carbonyls from the convex face. In principle, two possible lactones could have formed, a six-membered lactone or a five-membered lactone. This chemistry was done before the days of NMR spectroscopy, but Woodward knew which lactone formed because the carbonyl stretch in the IR for a six-membered lactone occurs at 1740 centimeters to the minus one, while the five-membered lactone stretched at 1770 centimeters to the minus one. The spectra showed a stretch at 1770, so compound four was the product. Compound four was treated with bromine, and the intermediate bromonium ion that formed on the convex face was opened intramolecularly in a transdiaxial fashion by the other inside pointing hydroxyl group to give five. 
five was treated with sodium methoxide to yield six. On the face of it, five to six looks like a substitution reaction that went with retention of configuration, but it is believed to proceed via an enolization, loss of bromine, Michael addition of methoxide from the convex face and reprotonation of the enol also from the convex face, a truly remarkable reaction. Addition of aqueous bromine to the double bond in 6 gave bromohydrin 7 stereoselectively, whose hydroxyl group was oxidized to the ketone 8 with chromium trioxide. This molecule basically looks like a ball, and it was unwound to give 9 using two equivalents of zinc. The double reduction mechanism looks something like this. The methyl ester was formed using diazomethane and the free hydroxyl group was acetylated with acetic anhydride to give 10. Treatment of 10 with osmium tetroxide followed by cleavage between oxygen containing carbons gave 11. The acid was methylated with diazomethane and that diester aldehyde was immediately reacted with 3-methoxytryptamine followed by reduction of the intermediate aminium ion with sodium borohydride to give the amide 13 which was subjected to bischler napierowski conditions to give the intermediate aminium ion 16 which was reduced with sodium borohydride to give 17. 17 has all the correct stereochemistry of reserpine except at that new chiral center at C3 where the hydrogen has to be up. To understand how Woodward equilibrated the C3 hydrogen to be up, we need to understand the conformational equilibria available to 17. Its three-dimensional structure looks like the following, where the hydride came in from the bottom to put the lone pair on top yielding a trans CD ring junction. This conformation is in equilibrium with conformation 17b, where the C3 hydrogen is still down but equatorial. Because ring D has inverted, ring E has to invert and this puts the three substituents axial. Clearly this conformational equilibrium lies to the left. If 17 is treated with acid, it could equilibrate to 21A, where the hydrogen is up and equatorial. The CD ring junction is cis, so this equilibrium would favor 17A. 21A, which is actually reserpine, could also exist as 21B, where the CD ring junction is trans, but ring E would also have all substituents axial, so 21 would exist as 21A. Woodward saw that if he could lock the hydroxyl and carboxyl functions together, forming 17B, that under acidic conditions the equilibrium would favor 21B. Breaking the orange bond in 21B would give reserpine 21A, which is stable so long as it's not treated with acid. So, potassium hydroxide hydrolysis of 17 gave hydroxy acid 18. DCC, a reagent that had found great use in closing the beta-lactam ring of penicillin a few years earlier, formed the lactone 19. Treatment with acid equilibrated to 20. Opening of the lactone ring with sodium methoxide followed by treatment with acid chloride of eudismic acid gave reserpine. Deals alder chemistry, molecular orbital analysis, infrared spectroscopy, conformational analysis and neat mechanisms make the Woodward synthesis of reserpine a great learning tool. The full details of the synthesis can be found in an early edition of Tetrahedron. Woodward was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1965 for his outstanding contributions to organic synthesis.